So we will go back to the middle age because um, compared to automotive industry, uh, the, the building industry could be uh, not advanced as, as, uh, as that, uh, as we can imagine. So uh, basically, I will start with a general overview of Saint-Gobain. Maybe you know Saint-Gobain, or some of you know this company, which is a pretty old company, uh, really old company. It, it has it has born more than 350 years ago. Uh, it has around 100, uh, 1,000 uh, industrial sites all around the world. Uh, it's a huge company because it's uh, uh, 180,000 people working for Saint-Gobain. Uh, huge sales, uh, and it's uh, the, the main focus of, the, of this company uh, is done on, on uh, the building and building industry and, and building material. It, Saint Gobain is the, the world leader of the, the, the building uh, material. Okay, uh, so in fact, it's not a classical company, it's more holding and of a lot of uh, brand and companies. So, I will not describe all this brand because it will be so boring that uh, you will leave uh, before the end. Uh, oh, just, just to mention, uh, if some of you have the train or plane, I will not upset if you leave the, the room. No worries. So, okay, so let's let's start with the brand. Uh, the main biz business, as I said, are focused on, on building industry, like uh, uh, glass for, for building. We have plasterboards, we have insulation with Isover and Solotex. The acoustic ceilings, maybe some of the panels here come from Ecofon Acoustics. Uh, the pipe uh, system, uh, we are solding this, uh, this brand, but we'll see. We have also mortars with Weber, uh, technical textile with AdForce. Uh, certain teeth ceilings we, who sells uh, uh, building materials in the United States. We have uh, automotive glazing with Securit, uh, abrasive with Norton, uh, Winter, and so on. Uh, I'm not sure to, to know all the brand of saint -Gobain. And we have also uh, distribution or service brands like uh, Pompe for the French people, uh, Juison for the uh, United Kingdom, or like La Plateforme du Bâtiment in Europe, so, and so on and so on. But Today, we just focus on plasterboards and mineral wool, which are the main components of uh, the uh, building insulation systems. Okay. So here is the, the agenda. Uh, I will start by a global introduction so on the, the problematic of, of uh, uh, building acoustic and why acoustic matter in building. I will do you uh, a short uh, summary of uh, or reminder for, for certain people of what is uh, what are the standard measurements in building acoustics. It's really important because uh, a lot of the, the, the product and the sellings are based on these standards and the, also the development are based on this. So it's important to understand that because you are scientists and you will see that it's not science at all. Uh, then I will talk about the post material for building acoustics. Uh, I will show you some acoustic systems and their behavior. And I will try to, to draw some new perspectives in building acoustics. So why acoustic matter in building? Uh, you have told, uh, heard of uh, environmental noise and it's, it's important to, to know that now environmental noise is more and more uh, considered by our politician as a public health problem. Uh, so the environmental noise is the unwanted or harmful outdoor sound created by human activities, including noise from road traffic, rail traffic, airports, and industrial, industrial sites. So you have to know that two thirds of uh, French people complain about noise at home and find that it's uh, the main source of uh, disturbance. Uh, it's the same uh, figures uh, for the working place. And in the last decade, we've seen a lot of, uh, of studies dealing with uh, uh, S impact, epidemiology, and so on. So just, uh, just to say that the environmental noise are serious cause of sleep disturbance. Uh, it can have a serious impact on health, on uh, quality of life. You can have immediate effect, 
like for me last night the hotel is just in front of a construction site and i've been wake up at uh, four in the morning so that's why i have this uh, kind of uh, face um, you have after effect sleepiness uh, daytime performance uh, i mean uh, when you are falling asleep it could be due to noise during the night why not i hope so if i see someone sleeping i would say yeah, it's due to noise during the night and it can have, it can have also long-term effects which are much more uh, in, impacting like uh, uh, earth, uh, earth uh, effect earth attack and, and, and so on you have a serious study that has been done in, in 2011 by the World uh, Health Organization saying that you have around 1 million life year life that that is that are lost in Europe due to the noise disturbance okay so you understand acoustic matters in buildings so reducing noise at the source is not enough mm, you have seen the presentation about cars so it's clear that we try to reduce the, the noise but you have more and more car maybe this uh, assumption will be not true with uh, in the future with the electric car but okay uh, it's clear uh, uh, that noise pollution is increasing in, in all the city mm. the building insulation have an important impact on the noise level perceived by people due to the fact that it's the last uh, envelope, the last protection that you, you can have. You can have environmental noise, but also the noise from the neighbor. And sometimes the noise from the neighbor are more uh, difficult to, to, to intend or to, to support that, that the, the noise from the, the external noise because it's a social noise. So the urban population density is clearly, clearly increasing in all the city and uh, noise reduction and acoustic insulation are now considered as a part of sustainable development by Europe. Okay. Hmm. So let's start with the standard measurement in building acoustics. I will uh, do or draw the difference, uh, explain what is sound uh, and soundproofing and, and make some difference. But it's the real basics. Uh, you have listened that maybe uh, four, five, uh, six times during these two days, so I will not stay, uh, stay on this, but it's a part of the learning to repeat. Huh? So you have airborne sound and uh, also uh, structure bond. Oh, I, st I still have uh, music, huh? which is Pink Floyd, yes, perfect. And uh, structure bond, uh, bond sound. Okay, so these two, these two uh, source uh, type are really important in building, uh, really different, not, not, uh, we don't use the same technique to, to, to deal with it and uh, to modelize it and, and so on. So two sources, but you know that. Uh, when you deal with soundproofing uh, in buildings, you have, you have always a source room and a reception room. So in the source room, you have the direct sound plus the sound reflections. And in the reception room, you have the sound transmission. It can be transmitted by the direct pass, which is generally the wall or ceilings, but also by the flanking pass, which can be the side wall or the ceiling or the floor. And, all. and this flanking transmission is not so much taken into account by the uh, industry when we solve solution, but much more by uh, regulation and, and architects because it's, you have mandatory uh, insulation performance to achieve in situ so taking into account the flanking transmissions okay so uh, i will do the the distinction between room acoustics and uh, insulations it can be funny for you because you are in the acoustics but you have to know that in in the, the building industry the people they mix uh, uh, a lot uh, absorption in solution for them it's the same oh, it's an absorbing material they, they believe it they ins that in it insulates but it's not so so you know that room acoustics deals with absorption the idea is to reduce the reverberation times you use uh, absorbing materials okay no worries with that and the other part is about the acoustic insulation. The idea is uh, not transmit uh, from a room to another a noise. Uh, so you, you want to be insulated. Uh, for that, in general, you use uh, a wall, mass, airtight, and a post materials. It has been uh, shown by Fabian and uh, clearly illustrated. 
Okay. Uh, so I will uh, talk about the standard measurement of the sun corrections. So absorptions. You have to know that you have two two scales. In fact, the the material is in system scales. Uh, you you do that in lab measurement. So you deal with uh, alpha coefficient absorption. You have a lot of declination of alpha. It's alpha s, alpha b, alpha p, alpha w. Uh, you you know, you have to, to deal with the, the surface and you are able to calculate an equivalent absorption. Now when you are the room scale, so in situ, you are more interested in the reverberation times, uh, the room equivalent absorptions, maybe the sound level inside because uh, if you don't have a, any absorption or bad absorption like in most of the restaurants you will have a, a huge uh, acoustic level we would make you talk louder and you have more and more level and so on okay and the speech clarity which are the, the, the some indicators about, uh, about the, the, the clarity of the talk so you know how is measured the reverberation time or what is the reverberation times it's one of the bases. Okay, it's the time that takes a sound to decrease of 60 dB. Yes, so you do that uh, on the frequency range. You can use uh, a sound source like, uh, I mean, a uh, white noise uh, source or a gun or uh, with some new application on the telephone, you you do like that. Oh, so it's a bit uh, sorry, and you uh, and and you um, analyze that and measure. So it's important because it's the base of the calculation um, used in ISO three uh, five four that do the calculation of the alpha Sabine. You know, for that you use a reverberant room. You assume that it's a diffuse field. So it's a huge uh, hypothesis, and then you do the measurement in the empty room. With the so you, you, you measure the uh, reverberation times, you are able to calculate the uh, equivalent absorption area. Then you do the same measurement of reverberation time with a sample of 10 square meters. Uh, and knowing the second reverberation times, you are able to calculate the alpha s knowing the uh, surface of your sample. So it's really classic. You are uh, obtained this kind of certificates, the classical absorption curves regarding frequency. Uh, this is normal. What is more funny is that uh, you have uh, frequency dependent uh, uh, properties and the uh, marketing guys, industrial guys, they, they, they prefer uh, single value uh, number. So for that, you use the double uh, U weighting. How do you do that? So you use the ISO uh, 11654 and what you do is from the alpha S defined in third octave band, you calculate the, oh, the alpha P, which is the mean value of the three value of the third octave band for each octave band. Then you have a reference curve where comes from this reference curve uh, it's, it's a mix of uh, compromise uh, done during the last 40 years. And you uh, put down this reference curve uh, uh, until the difference between the value of the, uh, the uh, at each octave of this reference curve is lower than 0 0.1. And you take the value at 500 Hertz. It's a bit strange if you are scientific, eh? because uh, you can have a lot of different shape of uh, absorbing materials. Uh, if you take uh, absorbers, if you take panels, uh, and you can play with that to get the best uh, single value. It's a bit strange. And you can notice that you, you don't have any input on the low frequency. So it's not true because the new standard that has been revised uh, obliged now to indicate the value at uh, the low frequency, so 125 hertz. Some other indicators like uh, NRC and all, they do a mean value of the absorption. So it's not, it's the only, the ISO that use this kind of, of technique. So that's for the sound corrections. Um, now you, we will deal with this, 
standard insulation measurement and characterization. First, you have to know that it's done in a sort of tap band from 100 hertz to 3150 hertz for the, the standard uh, measurements. More commonly and more and more, we use the 50 hertz up to 5000 hertz. The sensors are for the airborne sensors, it's a pink noise. Okay, for the, uh, the impact, it's uh, what we call a standard tapping machine. I, I don't know if you have ever heard this kind of machine. It's a nightmare. Uh, so it's a reference machine that, that is supposed to inject uh, the, same, uh, uh, the same force. Uh, but, but the problem is that the force depends on, on the impactor and on the surface. So. Uh, so you have, you can do two types of measurements. So the first one is the, the in-lab. So you measure the, the building uh, element performance. Uh, it's provide the data to be used at the, the design stage. Uh, so it's clear that you don't have the flanking transmissions. Uh, it's characterized interestingly the acoustic solutions and it enables the industrial to rank the, their solutions. Uh, you have also the on-fill or in-situ measurements. Here you take into account the real installation, the real flanking transmission, and it's uh, the insulation that you are supposed to achieve. And uh, we do this measurement only when we have some problems, some issues, and that we want to verify that the installation has been correctly done. In France, there is a new certificate that uh, obliged the uh, building constructor to verify that the acoustic reglementation has been fulfilled. Well. Okay, so uh, how do you do uh, these calculations? So you have a source in a reverberant uh, room uh, and a microphone, and you measure the pressure in the two rooms. So in the source room and in the uh, reception room. Uh, and okay, you do the difference of the level between the two uh, uh, noise level in, the, in the, the two rooms, and you do a normalization by the surface area. This equation, I, I don't know if you are uh, aware with that, but it comes from the hypothesis of the diffuse fields that say that you can consider that it's the plane wave hypothesis in a random incidence and say that. In the intensity can be written as the uh, square of the, the pressure uh, on the uh, rho uh, C. And then, okay. And if you, you want to calculate the, uh, the, the power, you multiply by the surface. Okay. So the higher the air, the better the insulation. Okay. So it's a bit the same for the, the impact, but here you only measure the, the noise. Uh, in the reception room, so you use the tapping machine, da, 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 and you measure the the the, noise, the 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 pressure level in the reception room, classical. So, and you do a normalization by the the surface area, the absorbing one, and the the the, the, the one in the emission. Here, the lower the uh, uh, the noise level, the better the insulation. So how do you calculate the, this uh, single value or global index? This is funny too. Uh, so there is a standard called ISO 717. And in fact, you have a reference curve here and you shift these reference curves uh, until the sum of the unfavorable deviation is large as, as large as possible for sure, but not more than 32 dB. 